As humans, I think we really need to be out in nature more. And you really get into the moment. You're focused on your paddling, or the view, or the animals, or the water. And you're forgetting about work and home and all those sort of things. Paddling's for very much everybody, from little kids to uh, gray old people, um, from the fully bodied to the disabled. Really the best way to get into paddling is to take a lesson. And you really learn to do it correctly the first time so that you're efficient about it, you're safe for your body, uh, you're smart about uh, any sort of perceived risks. Lessons are definitely the way to go. What does the whistle blast mean? Good paddling equipment will last longer than you will. It's good practically forever. Well, canoe is first of all super Canadian. Uh, it's a great all-round craft. You can paddle a normal canoe with one person or with two people or with a little bit of a crowd in there. You can get the whole family into one canoe. There's canoes for flat water like lakes and there's canoes for moving water like rivers. Well, sea kayaks uh, are, are better for bigger water because they have a cover over the top. It's pretty much a sealed environment. So water, big waves, are not gonna splash into the boat like they might in a canoe. So these are day touring kayaks, and this is what mostly we sell here in Alberta. They're around 14 feet, some of them are 13 to 15, and they're basically a full sea kayak in that it's great in wind and waves, but shorter, so there's a little less storage space. It's easier to store, easier to car top, great for paddling on the lakes around here, or even going down the local class one river in town. Uh, and you could take it to the coast and do a full trip there for a week. A single kayak is definitely gonna be faster than a single canoe. You've got the two blades, so there's one on each side, which is a better symmetry for your body, a little more efficient, um, and people seem to like that. Whitewater kayaks are entirely different, and they're designed to turn really easily. Um, that sport appeals to people that are looking for a few more thrills and spills. There are river running kayaks. And I'm much more of a river runner now than I was a play than I ever was a play boater. So that's why I've selected this boat. Just all around fun. And I'm not really the one to go doing loops and fancy acrobatics on the waves. So And then there's play kayaks, and they're designed to play on the river features like waves or hydraulics or other features of the river. And then the last category is creaking, uh, which is for going down very steep, narrow creeks, usually going over waterfalls. If you see anybody doing waterfalls, they're gonna be in one of those boats. So stand-up paddleboards are basically divided into two categories. There's touring, so they're going to be very pointy in the nose, and there's a little bit of a V to the hull just in the front section, and they are optimized for just paddling on flat water. The other type, which is the type most people have used so far because most stand-up paddlers learned about it in Hawaii or Mexico or California or somewhere hot, are the surf style. Right, and they're much rounder in the nose, and the, the bottom is flat the whole way. They're great for surfing. There's also a bit of a surf heritage to it, and I think the surf heritage is what's gotten a lot of people to try it in the first place. Then the actual paddling is what they fall in love with.